Mm-hmm. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Facebook Live this morning. Uh, we are <laughs> we are definitely Brother Paul DeHaan is doing a retro service today, and um, I said, boy, he hadn't got anything on us. We are very retro. We're coming to you today from our home office slash piano room and uh, many other things we use it for, but uh, we welcome you to our, our service today. Uh, not having church in our, our local church, just for some precautions. Uh, has had someone to come that their child was sick with COVID. And so we just took some precautions and uh, uh, nobody in the church is sick, everybody is well, but we just want to take some, take care, make sure everybody was safe. So we're going to come to you from our house, and uh, Sister Karen's here with us, and Brother Dwayne's over here outside of camera. You can't see him, but you'll probably hear him in a little bit. Um, Ashley and Eric's out of town. Christy's been sick. Brother Tony, our media man, is having to work today. So we're just having to make the best of it. But we're going to do it. We're going to sing some songs, and and uh, we're just going to have a good time right here in the office. So... Um, Y'all just get in and worship God with us. Hey, won't you do us a favor? Won't you, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, we share this. Watch party. Or won't, you, won't you do a watch party? And uh, on your phone, just do a watch party. and Invite several of your friends. And let's just, let's just come together um, for that. That's, that's the way we can reach more by people doing that. And uh, I'm not real smart on that, but I do know how to do that. But... Uh, we're just going to worship God. Father, we come to you today thanking you for the privilege and honor it is to worship you. God, we ask God your blessings. God, we can have church wherever we are. God, I have found that to be true. God, we can have church right here in our home. God, we, you've given us the honor and, and the, the privilege to be able to go out on, on, uh, on, on Facebook, God. And, and we, want to, we want to just reach out to those in need, God. And God, we pray, God, you just bless our service today. Let everything be done in decency and honor to bring honor and privilege to you. We thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We're going to sing a, a congregational song, and then we're just going to get in here. And uh, we're, Karen and I are going to sing a couple specials and kind of some old throwback songs. That's all we know is, is old songs, but we're just going to have a good time today. All right, baby. Heard an old story How the Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me Heard about his glory Yes, thank you, Jesus
song here just to, just here in a minute but um, many of y'all know that we have been we have been desperately desperately praying for sister Linda Fuller, um, brother Dwayne's grandmother and these these are our family and been our church family for years and um, sister Fuller is off of sedation she's been moved to an ICU room where her family can visit with her but she's not yet gained consciousness and um so we want to we want to pray that god will god will bring her uh to conscious where she can be able to communicate with her family and and uh to my understanding but Dwayne can help me here if, if if that don't happen pretty soon they're talking about maybe having to put a trach in mm -hmm. and so we need we need god to speak life into her god has already given her a miracle mm -hmm. and um and so we we need her to be, to come to become conscious and uh so we're going to pray for her i want you to join with us and uh we want we want her to wake up and that's what we've been praying lord wake her up and uh from out of this deep sleep she's been several days um sedated and i know that's a process it takes a little time i know me just having surgery and uh just being sedated for that short time of surgery coming out of surgery uh, sometimes it takes me at least a day to get where I can I can communicate well. Um, but um, Sister Linda has been sedated for several days. But we want to pray that today she opens her eyes and begins to communicate yes. with all. So I want you to pray with us, and we're going to sing this song again because there was a verse in it talked about the healing power of Jesus, yes. and uh, we know that He's able. So. Father, we come to you right now, God speaking life. God, we speak life, God and Sister Linda Ford. God, you've already done a tremendous work. Holy Ghost, I feel your anointing right now in this room. Father, I pray that God, before this day is over, God, those eyes will open and God should begin to communicate. God, we pray, God, that everything begin to function, God, in the manner that you designed it to function. God, this fluid will go off of her body, God, where the swelling will go down. And, and God, I'm believing in you, God, that she'll be able to come off of this respirator and God be able to breathe on her on. And, 
And God should not have to have any more surgeries whatsoever. And God should be able to return home to her husband and her family. And God, we're believing in you for it. In the name of Jesus, wake up. In the name of Jesus, wake up. And God, we claim it. God, you're the one that yes. stood at the grave of a dead yes. man yes. and just said to him, come out, come Lazarus, yes. come forth. Yes. And Father, today we speak to Linda and we pray that she come forth yes. in the name of the Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you for praying that. We feel that today. Let's sing this one more time. Listen. God is healing. Yes, revealing. God's going to do a special thing. Hey, listen. Listen, we still, we, even though we're not in the sanctuary today, we still need your giving. Let me tell you what God did. I've um, been, been working on this expansion program of, of our building and uh, just uh, bringing our two buildings together so we can get our children's church ministry building finished. And and uh, I, I spent... Twenty-two hundred dollars of material, and and uh, I've been doing the work myself, so it's labor-free. But I spent twenty-two hundred dollars in material last Sunday morning's offering was twenty-five hundred dollars, and uh, that just shows you what God can do. God said, "Not only will I add back what you spent, I'm gonna yes, give sir. some extra on top of it." Amen. And I, I want to say thank you for your giving. And I uh, appreciate so much. There's people online been given, and I uh, want you to continue to do so. You can go to um, our our app, Give. I think it's just called uh, Give Out. I think it's what's called Cash. It's a cash, cash out. out. Cash out. Yeah, that's it. And the cash tag is Abundant Life Give. I think it's capital A, right. and all of it run together. Abundant Life Give. Or you can you can send it um, to 127 Jessica Lane, Brooklyn, Arkansas 72417. And uh, but we appreciate your giving, and uh, God bless you for it. And it's going for a good cause. And and uh, we we are almost ready for sheetrock on the inside. Just a little bit, uh, get some wiring work done, and and uh, before you know it, that part of it will be done. And then here's the good thing is. Because it's two buildings, even though they're close together, they were they were ten foot apart. We're having to pay two insurance, but since now they've been joined together, now it's it can it's considered one one building, and we can drop one of those insurance policies, and it'll be just covered under one. So we're saving money at the same time. We're getting ready to move forward into our children's ministry. And so we appreciate your giving. If you'd like to give a one-time gift or however you want to do, we'll just appreciate it so much. Your giving is very important to us, and uh, we, we are, we're being very much accountable for that. We're going to sing a couple of, of just uh, good old church songs, uh, um, not not uh, uh, hymnals, but just a couple songs that everybody knows, and, and uh, we're just going to worship God. And then I'm going to have a little bit of time, a word, but... Uh, we're just going to worship you out. Thank you for worshiping with us. All right, go ahead. Must have been. Sing it with us. Every year a little 
quickly about this and uh, Kaylee and I yesterday were out at the at the <coughs> graveyard and cleaning off my dad and mom's grave and and we were out there and we just we had a little quiet time together I got a little bench I took out there and we sat down on that bench and we both were saddened at heart because I miss my mom and dad and she misses her great her grandparents and and um, and so we were just talking about life and death and and then it just dawned on me, and I asked her. I said, "Honey, uh, do you know do you know your directions?" And she said, uh, "What do you mean, Papa?" I said, "Do you know your directions? Do you know north, south, east, and west?" And she said, "Well, sort of." And I said, "Will you look at all of these graves and tell me which way they're facing?" And she said, "I'm not real sure." And I said, "Well, all these graves are facing east. If you look at all the gravestones, they're facing east." And she said. Okay, and I said, do you know why? She said, not really. And I said, well, the Bible says that Jesus will split those eastern skies. And he said he was coming. And the scripture said the trump of Zion was going to sound. He said, those dead in Christ shall rise first. And I said, there's coming a day that Jesus is going to come from the east. And those, 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 those bodies will rise from that. And they'll put on that glorified body. And they'll be joined again with that soul, and, and what a day of reuniting that's going to be. And I told her, I said, from now on, every time you go to a graveyard, I want you to look, all of those grave headstones are facing east. Somebody thought about that a long, long time ago, to be sure and do that. But what a day. I believe we're closer now than we've ever been before, folk. We're seeing things happen. We're seeing covenants being signed with Israel. We're seeing peace treaties being signed. And, uh, man, it's getting close. We're getting ready to go home. And uh, I rejoice. I rejoice in that. Not sad about that. But we're getting close. Amen to be reunited. So I, I thought that was just a good experience with Kaylee and I yesterday out there in the graveyard. And I could just almost see. Matter of fact, I thought this would be a good place to be. Mm -hmm. This would be yeah. a good place to be when the trumpet sounded. Wouldn't that be awesome? Right. Standing right there by your parents' grave, and all of a sudden that grave begins to shake, and that body resurrects it and goes to be with the Lord. And, and you say, well, that would be a scary moment. 
Well, I if you're right you with God, you know that you're the next to go. Amen. Amen. That's what excites me. That makes me want to jump out of this chair. Amen. That would be a time to know that, oh, God, you said they would be called up first. Then those which are alive shall be called up together to meet the Lord in the air and there forever be with the Lord. Amen. Well, that's not my message, but I could preach on that for a little while. But, but anyway, we got, we got another song we're going to sing through, and y'all bear with us. We're rusty and all that, but we're doing the best we can for the kingdom. That's all he asked for. Amen, but it's good. Hey, Ben Hart, man, is this a... There's a light in the window on the table spread its window Someone standing by an open door I can see a crystal river Lord, I must be here forever in this home Places are familiar. No one's old or feeble anymore. This old lonesome heart is crying. I think I'll spread my wings for flying. Lord, I've never been this homesick. homesick are you homesick for the father amen let me kind of move a little bit so she can 
Get up, move over to the other side. Amen. We appreciate you so much. Amen. For coming into our home with us and just having church with us. And and uh, like I said, it's a it's a little bit different. A little bit. Um, well, you know, it's just the day we live in. And, and um, I kind of like sitting in this comfortable chair. I might take this to church and just preach out of it from now on. I might start a new routine. Probably not, but uh, uh, anyway, it's a good good thought. But I, I'm glad to know that that um, we're not far from the time that the Lord is going to call us home. I want to I want to talk to you about something the Lord spoke to me about this week, and the uh, Lord has really been speaking directly into me, and I really I really believe He is. And uh, I was um, I was at the church working and. And I was up on a ladder, and uh, really I was on the scaffold. And uh, I, was, I was up there, and I was just kind of praying to myself. And and I, I said, I said to the Lord, I asked Him a question. I said, God, what what is going on? What is what is taking place with all that's going on? The chaos and the the uh, turmoil in our land, and all this sickness and illness, and and um, I know several churches that are not able to have church today because of the COVID. And several churches not able to have church because of man's laws, and I'm against that 100. percent But uh, but I begin to ask God, God, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing in the midst of this? And boy, it seems like God spoke to me plain, and uh, I, I just I heard Him speak to my spirit. And God said this in my spirit, man. God said, this is not a punishment, but this is a promise. Come on. And I thought, I got off of that scaffold and walked out in the church and prayed. And I thought, God, what in the world? What do you mean by that? Has God ever spoke something to you that you didn't understand? Hang on, he will. On. And I thought, God, what, what in the world did that mean? This is not a punishment. It sure seems like a punishment. Don't it seem that way? Come on. Uh, and I, I, I pray and I said, God, what do you mean it's a promise? God said, my promises are yea and amen. Yeah. And we take that to mean that that's all good things. His yeah. promises are yea and amen, which is good things. But I'm going to also tell you something. God said that if we, if we turn to sin, punishment's going to come our way. And that's a promise. That's a promise the, the, the scripture says the nation that sins against God will be turned into hell. Mm -hmm. That's scripture. That's the word of God. And God said, that's a promise. God said, I'm not punishing nobody, but I'm keeping my promise. The words of God is so ever true, and God's not going to change his word just so it, so it fits our lives a little better. So we may have to go through some tough days as Christians as God brings punishment upon the land that's rebelled and sinned against God. We're murdering babies. We're, we're instituting sins that, that goes against the ordinances and the laws of God. We're, we're saying things are, are uh, according to the nature of man, and God never designed them that way. And, uh, you know, and so what we're seeing happen is not God's punishment. We're seeing God's promises take place. Uh, does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. Uh, God's promised it. God said, God said, if you sin, there's repercussions that's going to come. Sure. And uh, you know, my dad, <clears throat> my dad was not a, a a violent man in in my time span. I didn't know him when he was a sinner. He he might have been around her when he was a sinner. I, I I didn't know him then. I only knew him as a Christian. But uh, my dad would tell us sometimes, boys, when we get home. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to the seat of the problem in this matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I know we don't, we don't like to talk about that now. But that's why we got a young generation that's doing what they're doing in the world today. And, but anyway, Dad would give us a promise. I'm going to deal with this when I get home. And so, <clears throat> sure enough, <clears throat> when we got home, uh, Dad would deal with it because he kept a promise. And so... Uh, it was a punishment. It was a promise. I want to read you some scriptures out of the book of Psalms. Psalms uh, 9. And going to read a few scriptures here, starting in verse number 15. It says, The heathen are sunk down in a pit that they made 
We get this. In the net which they hid in their own foot is taken. Now I want you to get a hold of that. Said the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. Now look at this. We're seeing things happening in our world today as a result of things that men have done. And we're seeing it take place. They have sunk down in a pit that they made. And then he said they're hung up. Their foot's hung in a net that they put out. Now isn't that something? We're seeing that take place. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. Now get a hold of that. God is known by the judgment that he executed. And he said, the wicked is snared in the works of his own hands. Said, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Well, we're in a perilous time right now, folk. We're in a dangerous time right now because we're in a, we're in a time that this nation has to a majority, not everybody. Listen, that God's always going to have a remnant. Hallelujah. God's always going to have a remnant that's going to stand up for truth and righteousness. And we seen that yesterday where I, I think somewhere around 50,000 people met in Washington, D.C. Washington, and done a, had a prayer rally. Beautiful, beautiful. And so God's going to have a remnant. But he said, the wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell and the nation that forgets God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten and the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. That's our prayer today. Arise, O Lord, don't let man prevail. Oh, don't let man prevail. One of the old prophets said, I, it's, it's more expedient, it's more necessary to me to obey God than it is to man. Yeah. And he said, don't let man prevail. Uh, he, he, went on, he went on and said, here, he said, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. And he said, put them in fear, O Lord, that the nation may know themselves to be but man. Listen, this nation needs to understand that they ain't God. Right. They're trying to make judgment calls as if they're God. Right. They're trying to pass orders and ordinances as if they're God. They're trying to put laws and mandates upon humanity as if they're God. But they're not God. Right. Beloved, God's going to have the final say in this situation. And His say is going to be a, a word of judgment when it comes. This nation is a nation that right now don't want anything to do with God. We're seeing a nation rise up and we're seeing a rebellion take place like we've never seen before. In the book of Isaiah 5 and 20, He said, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil and um and we're we're seeing it we're, we're seeing that day take place in the day in which we live in now evil is good it's okay to murder a full-born baby a baby that's been birthed at at, at uh all the way carried nine forth months, yeah. to the nine months and when it's born it's okay to kill that baby that's murder i don't care how Else you say that kind of riles me up a little bit. But now we're calling evil good. And uh, it's, it's, it's not right. Um, and, uh, so we're, we're seeing it. And, uh, and I ask this question, is it too late to prevent the decline and fall of American society? I don't believe it's too late. I believe it's still time. I believe we're at the closing of the door. I really do. I, I really do. We're seeing it take place. But uh, there's some things that this nation has got to do. And there's some things we can do to, to, uh, to help us. The wrath of God is being revealed against all. I want you to notice this. Things that's happening in our land today is affecting us all. It's effect and I believe it's going to get worse. Before the elections, I, I see things getting worse even after the elections. Things are going to be bad. And uh, so, uh, with the wrath of God has been revealed against all and who suppresses the truth. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities have been clearly seen, being understood what, these, these, what has been made, so that people who are without excuse, although they knew God, 
They neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him. Listen to me. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the created things rather than the Creator. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing take place in our land today. And because of this, God gave them over to shame for lust. Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind, so they do what ought not to be done. Right. They not only condone these very things, but also approve those that practice them. When we have people in leadership speak out and encourage the injustice in our streets today, amen, that's what the Word of God's talking about. Not only do they not speak against it, but they encourage it. They, they, they approve it, these injustices. And we're seeing this take place. We're seeing Bible prophecy brought to light right before our eyes. When you read, you can read Romans 1, 18, 32, and that's where I just took that from. And you'll see it. America is currently experiencing the wrath of God. This is not the promise of God. I mean, this is not the punishment of God, but this is the promise of God. They're experiencing the wrath of God. Yet many people are totally clueless to what's going on. God's wrath can be either active or passive. Let me dis distinguish between the active and passive wrath of God. Vivid demonstration of God's active wrath are seen in the Old Testament and throughout the book of Revelation. When God unleashes His active wrath, it is both stunning and cataclysmic. It's both stunning and just powerful. And we're, we're seeing it. An example, fire and brimstone raining down from the sky. However, when God reveals His passive wrath, He does not need to do anything other than step back and allow us to experience the ultimate self-destructive result of sin. Listen to me. That's where we are right now. We're having to just step back and watch the self-destruction because of sin. My Lord, friends, we're seeing, we're seeing innocent people being just done absolutely wrong. Just innocent people walking down the street and and evil men run up behind them and hit them in the back of the head with a brick. We're seeing people trying to enjoy their lunch at a table at a restaurant and people come and sit in beside them with vile uh, language and just interrupt their time of peace. We're seeing it right before our eyes. This is not God's punishment. This is God's promise that's coming to pass. You say, well, it is a punishment, but, but folks, look at what I'm trying to say. God already told us he was going to do this. Right. And if we've been Bible readers, we would know, uh oh, look here, this is God doing what God said he would do. And God does not. Here, listen to me. The Bible said there's only one thing that God cannot do. Yes. I was thinking about it. There's only one thing that God can, you said God can do anything. God can do everything. But there's one thing God said I will not do. And that is God said I will not lie. You hear me? God said, I will not lie. So if God said, I'm going to bring wrath against those that does unjust, unjust against me and my ways, those that go against my word, he said, I'm going to bring wrath against them. I'm going to bring judgment against them. I'm going to allow things to take place in the lives of those that sin and around those that sin. This is God's promise taking place. It's not a punishment. It's God's promise. It may feel like a punishment right now to us. That's not, not part of this. Now, I'm going to speak some things, and I want you to hear my heart in this, because what I'm going to speak will not be real popular. And I found out lately God's not called me to be popular, but God's called me to be passionate and to be powerful with what i got to say. Uh, when President Barack Obama took office, office, Barack Obama took office, he said, this is his word, he said he would fundamentally change America. Listen to me. That's his very word. That's a quote from his saying. To our, to our, he said he would fundamentally change America. To our pearl, that's a promise he kept. He kept that promise. Under the Obama administration, the moral 
DK America escalated at alarming rate. Come on. Listen to me. Amen. Today, large segments of the population seemingly and unable to distinguish between good and evil is because we had a leader that determined, I'm going to turn this nation away from God. Listen to me. I'm going to turn it away from God into a, into a, a I'm going to fundamentally change what America founding fathers brought, her, brought us to, to be. Now, if you'll go back a few Sundays, you'll see I preached about that, about our founding fathers and how they, they brought us to where we are today. We are plagued. I want you to hear me. We are plagued by angry atheists who are bound and determined to remove every thing, every law of God from public display. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. That's what's happening in our world today. Yes, sir. That, that's exactly what's going on. Nobody will bring it up. Nobody wants to mention it. I don't know why God's calling me right now to be the watchman on the wall, but I'm going to holler it and scream it out loud. <laughs> but what we're seeing is... Was angry atheists bound and determined to remove every law of God from public display. We're being overrun by militant homosexuals who are not content merely to come out of the closet. Instead, they attempt to trample underfoot and shove into the closet everyone not bowing down to their every demand. Now hear me. I'm not speaking out of hatred. I love everyone. I believe God loves them. God don't love their sin, but God loves the person. God loves them enough to bring them out of that, that sin. Listen, the Obama administration has forced the LGBT agenda on the public. On. The Obama agenda, they, they forced it on the public. His attorney general, Loretta Lynch, has even gone so far as to equate the LGBT agenda with the civil rights movement, movements in the 1960s. Her statements defile the memory of Martin Luther King and all he fought for and died for. No doubt, no doubt, if Dr. King could hear her shameful comments, he would turn over in his grave and probably vomit. Yeah. Even because of the statement that she said, now listen to me, God is slow to anger. Now man is quick to anger, but God is slow to anger. However, when a nation rejects God, he will eventually reject that nation too. Now you hear me? When a nation rejects God, eventually God will reject that nation too. Now if you, if you live in a home and you have power in your home or sitting under light, today and uh, if you don't pay your bill you will you will not get by with it the first month and then not long after that they will hang a notice on your door and that notice will be a cutoff notice I believe for the last few years we've been under a cutoff notice Come on. I believe under the last oh, few God. years God has given us opportunity to pay the debt amen that we're owed to God you said God paid the debt for us you're right but there's some things he expects us to do as well. We can't just live willy vanilla and just, just expect God to take us home. And there's a cutoff notice. And so, so God's wrath is, is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna take place. And, uh, so we're, we're seeing, we're seeing that take place in our land today. I want you to notice, uh, for the most part, uh, God is the, the, let, let me back up. Uh, when the nation rejects God, he will eventually reject that nation too. America, for the most part, is defiantly shaking its collective fists in the face of God. You hear me? They're shaking their fists in the face of God. They're burning Bibles in the street, folk. I'm not making this up. They're burning the American flag and throwing on top of the American flag, flag the word of God. What blasphemy is there such as that? Amen. And so they're shaking their fist in the face of God. I don't want you, God. I don't want your laws. I don't want your commands. I don't want your ways. And God, for only a season, is going to put up with that. It's only logical to conclude that God will soon give this nation up to the control of the people 
having depraved, corrupt, and moral, worthless minds. Come on. Friend, I'm telling you something. You'll find this in Romans 1 and 28. You'll find what I'm talking about. We're getting dangerously close to being completely overturned by hell-bound reprobates. Yeah. We're oh. getting dangerously oh, close to that. Amen. They're, they're in our streets every night. Cities in our streets. Uh, people, in, folk, listen to me. We're seeing the people's own communities. They're burning their own stores. Yeah. Burning their own communities. It's not a race thing because they're burning communities, uh, places of black people and white people. And, and it's, it's not a race thing. It's a sin thing. It's a sin thing going on in our land today. See what so what are so what are what does what does a nation look like when it has been been given up to people having depraved minds? According to Romans 1, 29, 31, it is filled with unrighteousness, wickedness, and greed. You hear me? Right. Amen. Now it's about me. It's a me agenda. You're seeing it? It's me agenda. What about me? Yeah. What about me? I want you to lay up in store for me. I want you to take everything you worked so hard for and give it to me. Yeah. Everything is about greed and evil. Amen. We're, 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 we're seeing it take place in our, in our day today. So, and then further, it's filled with envy, murder, strife, and malice. The people are gossipers, slanderers, God haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. Amen. They don't mind to stand up and tell you how they believe. Right. Where's the church been the last 20 years? <laughs> I know we get quiet right there. And now we want to jump up and start speaking. The cow's out of the gate. Yeah. Hey, it is time to stand up and speak. I'm not saying it's ever not a time to stand up and speak. But now the, the, the cow's out. You know, now we got to get the cow back in the gate and make sure the gate stay closed. Sure. But if we kept the gate closed to start with, we may not be in the situation we're in now. And I'm not pointing finger blame at all. You know, I got I got some more fingers pointing back at me. So we're we're seeing this take place in the nation that we we live in. Amen. They the the Bible says they invent ways of doing evil. I noticed the other day that on on the streets of one of our cities there was a U-Haul truck parked ready. For the violence. Yeah. When, it, when it come dark, when it come dark dirty, the Bible says they love darkness because their deeds are evil. Right. Not doing this in the daytime. Right. There's some things going on in the daytime. But most of this is taking place at night. But a you all truck, the door opened up and everything come out for destruction. For destruction. None of it was used to, to produce life, but it was used for harm and destruction. They invent, they invent ways of doing evil. We're, we're seeing it every day. We think, man, they can't come up with nothing else. But boy, they keep inventing new ways. That's right. They are disobedience to parents. Listen to me. Biggest majority of those on the street today are between 18 and 25. Yeah. Some even lower than that. Some 14, 15, 16 years old. And some of them just simply because they never had a father figure in their life. And uh, they never had parental destruction in their life. Some of us, just, some of it is just children that's just rebellious. Mm -hmm. They had good parents, but they chose a rebellious way. But we're seeing this take place. They they are senseless, faceless, heartless, and show no mercy. That sounds a lot like the America we see on the daily news now, yes, don't sir. it? Yes, it's exactly what we're seeing. We are getting dangerously, dangerously close to the climax of God's passive wrath. On America, right. we're seeing it. We're seeing it come to take place. We know that God is slow to anger, has great love, and He would rather forgive than sin judgment. Mm -hmm. Consequently, God, in His mercy, has given us a simple step by step procedure we can use to to uh, to uh, to cast off His judgment. God has given us a step by step way to do this. If there ever was a time the church needs to look at this and we've quoted it, we've quoted it, we've quoted it, and we've quoted it, and we quoted it. And Brother Dwayne, that's in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. And we all know it. If I asked you to quote it, you could quote it. 
you know, is talking about if God's people would return, would return, would confess their sins and turn from their wicked ways, God would heal our land. Mm-hmm. But I want, I want to break it down a little bit for you today, and I, I, I want to, I want to read you something that I found, and it's, it's a little different than my, my language, but you'll understand what I'm talking about. In mathematics and computer science, they routinely work with what's called algorithms. Algorithms. An algorithm is a simple step-by-step procedure for, <clears throat> for performing some action. Computer programs are simply set of set of algorithms that tell computers exactly what to do. Computer algorithms commonly contain conditional statements in the form of if conditions, then what to do if the conditions are true, else what to do if the condition are false. Oftentimes conditional statements are written more simply as if then statements. All right, in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, we find the statement of if then form and implies else. The Bible algorithm says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, hear them in heaven, I will forgive their sins and hear the land. Amen. Algorithm tells us that if we meet Four specific conditions, then God will bless, else He will allow us to continue along the path of destruction. Let's 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 look at these for just a minute. The context of the circumstance surrounding Second Chronicles seven fourteen are different from what we face today in America, but the general principle still applies since God does not change. Hello, somebody. God does not change. Malachi 3 and 6 and Hebrews 13 and 8. Now let's take a closer look at this important biblical algorithm uh, for revival and restoration. 2 Chronicles 7 14 begins with the phrase, If my people who are called by my name. Original, the, the accent uh, oris- Israelites were my people. He's talking about here. However, in 714, my people also applies to the followers of Jesus. Are you a follower of Christ? Right. Yes, sir. I'm a follower of Christ. So the scripture is talking to us Christians. It's, it's a kind of a, a shaking, if you will. He's talking to us. We are his people. Right. Hebrews 8 and 10 talks about the promise of the new covenant. No matter what label we place on ourselves, the church, Christian, uh, believers, etc., we are his people, and the promise applies to us. The premise of 2 Corinthians 7.14 contains four conditions. First condition is that we humble ourselves. What we're seeing today is not a humble submission. We're seeing people stand up bold, straight back, and they're not submitting or humbling to man nor God. Right. They're not submitting to man nor God. But God speaks in a way that brings us to a different level. He said, you've got to have some humility, and you've got to humble. A proud and an arrogant spirit is sickening in the eyes of God. God won't, God won't allow that. So he tells us first, you've got to learn how to humble before him. We do this by confessing the sins of the nation as well as personal sins. We use the model of Nehemiah's prayer. I confess the sins of I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws, God, your servant, God, that the laws you gave to your servant Moses. <clears throat> we have broken each of the Ten Commandments, friend. Mm-hmm. You hear me? Right. We've broken them all. We have, we have done worse than Moses. Moses got mad. He threw that commandment down and then it broke. But we've broken them all individually. 
We've broken them all. Systematically, we've broken them. We've broken every one of them. We have not loved the Lord God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, as the, the Scripture teaches us. We've not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We've not done that. We've not treated others the way that we want them to treat us. The second condition is that we pray. Boy, we need to learn. We need to really pray. Right. We need to pray, and uh, we don't pray like we used to. And I, 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 I say we, and I don't have a mouse in my pocket. I include us all. We, we need to pray like we never prayed before. Pray to God first of all. Ask for forgiveness. Brother Russell, I don't have anything to ask forgiveness for. There's your first problem. you got an arrogant spirit. Hmm. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we all need to stop and ask God for forgiveness. Do you know what we need to do then? We need to pray for our leaders. I don't like our leaders. God didn't ask you to like them. He asked you to pray for them. That's right. Matter of fact, He commanded you to pray for them. I don't like President Trump. God didn't ask you to like him. He asked you to pray for him. Right. Are you praying for our leaders? Come on. Are you praying for those in charge of us? Well, Brother Russell, he says, he says some nasty words occasionally. Well, you know what? I'm sure some of us have said some things that's not been real good either. But God still says pray for them. Right. Pray for them. So right. we've got to learn how to pray for our leaders. Pray for King, the President, for everyone that's in authority over us. That we may live quiet, peaceful lives as we worship and honor God. God tells us to pray for them as we want to live a peaceful and quiet life. How many wants to live a peaceful and quiet life yes, and serve amen. God? Amen. We're seeing that be turned upside down now. You wonder if it's because we've not been praying for leadership. If we've not prayed for leadership. Amen. We need to pray. We're just a few days from time of election. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. But I do ask you to do this. I ask you to vote the Bible. Vote the Bible. Don't vote for those that are that believe in killing our babies. Right. Don't vote for those who wants to take away our Second Amendment rights. Come on. Don't vote for those who wants to take prayer out of school and prayer, right. prayer out of institutions. Don't vote for those who wants to shut down church and it's against religion. Vote for those that stand up for those constitutions. Vote for those that stand up for marriage between a man and a woman. Yes. Right. Vote for those. Vote the Bible. That's right. Vote the Bible. I'm not going to tell you how to vote. Amen. But I will tell you how what you need to vote for. So we got to pray. A third condition. <clears throat> we got to seek God's face. We got to seek God's face. We've gone way too long seeking God's hand. Mm -hmm. Hello? Right. We've That's gone good. too long seeking God's hand. God bless me. God, I need this. God, I need that. God, I want this. God, I want that. God, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. That's seeking God's hand. But we need to seek God's face. God, I need you to look upon me. Uh -huh. I need you to look upon my family. I need you to look upon my life. I need you to look upon my children. I need you to look upon our nation. Uh -huh. I need you to look upon our generation. God, I need you to look upon us, God. We're seeking your face. When you seek faith, you seek God's face. You seek God and all His glory. Right. Then all this other stuff will come into play. So we seek first the Good kingdom of God. God. Yeah. Amen. So we, we're seeking. We're seeking God. And we're, we're seeking His direction. <clears throat> God our Father wants us to know Him for who He is. Amen. Everybody just wants to say, oh, he's a God of love. <laughs> Preacher, stand in pulpit and preach. He's a God of love. Yeah. He loves everything and everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He is a God of love. He's also a God of judgment, friend. That's right. He's a just God. And he don't love everything. That's right. He don't love everything. So we want, we want to know who God is. And we also want to know what He can do for us. If we're known of God for who He is, we must come to His presence, sit at His feet, and learn the heart and mind of God. The only way for us to learn the heart and mind of God is by spending time 
in his word, the Bible. <clears throat> you give me a piece of cake. Give me a <laughs> the Bible is what we got to go back to, friend. The Bible is what we got to turn back to. The bottom line is this. If we're truly seeking God's face, then we must do more than humble ourselves and pray. We must also read the Word of God. It's got to become a daily thing in our life. <clears throat> the fourth and final condition is that we turn from our wicked ways. I asked you again, who's he talking to here? Who's he talking to here? When he says, if my people, he's talking to the church. I think God's trying to shake up the church. I think God's trying to wake up the church. God's wanting to come and receive the church unto himself. But the church has got to wake up. We prayed a while ago for Sister Linda to wake up. But the church needs to wake up. Man. We become in a slumber and sleep. But we gotta wake we gotta wake up and come to reality that God's coming soon to take us home. <clears throat> he don't want this gospel message preached, but the devil's <laughs> alive. Right. That's right. The father of all lies. <clears throat> so we gotta turn from our wicked ways. I want you to think a minute. What could be our wicked ways? It could be our thoughts that we have concerning someone else? Isn't that something that we have to get a control of? You know that's probably one of the hardest things that we have to get control of? Our thoughts of thinking evil of someone else. Somebody done you wrong. First thing pops in our mind. I pray to God that something just as bad happens to you. Mm. That's not God's plan. That's not God's will. God said to pray for them who have done you wrong. That's hard, isn't it? That's hard. But that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to repent. Listen to me, church. This preacher needs to have a time of repentance. Preacher, you can't see sitting in this room needs a time of repentance. Yeah. My wife sitting behind me needs a time of repentance. Yes, sir. Yeah. You need a time of repentance. You need to get somewhere alone with God and just repent yes, and come clean. Yes, sir. God's calling us to a place of repentance. I'm almost through. Hang in there with me for a minute. The first way He will bless us is by hearing us in heaven. I want to give you something there. Amen. Our unhindered prayers will flow to heaven and He will hear us. Now, the word translated into English as here, the Hebrew word is Shema, S-H-E-M-A. The Hebrew word Shema means to listen attentively and do. Now, that's different than what just I spoke to you. The Hebrew word is to hear and do. So in other words, God will listen carefully to our prayers and will act upon them. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes me feel real good when God hears my prayer and acts upon my prayer. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's different than what is just praying and hearing. The prayer of a righteous man, the Bible said, avails much mm -hmm. or is very powerful and effective. The second way he'll bless us is by forgiving us of our sins. God forgive me of my sins. Can somebody say that with me? God, God forgive me of my sins. sins. We're praying God forgive our nation. But our nation starts with you and me. God forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of an evil outlook. Forgive me of a hateful spirit. Forgive me of an envious eye. On and on I could go. But we need God's forgiveness. Right. We, we, when we place 2 Corinthians 7, 14 in context, 
we find that God has previously warned the people if they sinned against Him, there would be severe consequences. You hear me? Remember I said this is not God's, God's punishment. This is God's promise. He warned them, if you sin against me, there's going to be severe consequences. The land would suffer drought. Locusts would devastate their crops. The people would be plagued with deadly diseases. Oh, what did that say? Mm -hmm. What did that say? Come on. The people would be plagued with deadly diseases. Knowing this, King Solomon wisely asked God <clears throat> to make provisions for the people when they sin. God's response was the promise found in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Some of y'all never knew that. Some of y'all never thought about that. Right. That's the provision for sin. 2 right. Chronicles 7 and 14. Right. And the provision for sin is a turnaround. Mm -hmm. That's repentance. That's forgiveness. Is a turnaround. Right. Some of us need a turnaround. I right. never forget a young man to come to God. He was vile and evil in his ways. He was corrupt. He had a reputation in the town of being just a, just a mean young man. This young man come to the altar on Easter Sunday, knelt at an altar and confessed his sins before God. He wasn't in the altar a total of probably less than five minutes. But you know what? When he got up, his expression had changed. He got up hugging everybody he could hug. Hug. Loving everybody he could love. People went on after months passed. Uh, pass. People would say, I can't believe the change in that young man. You know why? There was a turnaround. There was a turnaround. Mm -hmm. That's right. What does the world see in us? What does the world see in us? I was, I was told last night, of a person who claims to be a Christian. Right. But every other word out of their mouth is filth. Mm -hmm. The F word has become the common word mm -hmm. in the land we live in today. That's right. And the Bible said, don't let no vile word proceed out of your mouth. That's right. The word said that, friend. When Peter wanted everybody to think that he was a sinner just like them, mm -hmm. he started cursing. Amen. When you get saved, curse words should leave your vocabulary. I'll change that. Curse words will leave your vocabulary. It may be a process. There may be a slip up now and then, but the conviction of God will change you in due season, in due time. And those things will leave you. We're presently witnessing the decline and fall. Sorry of America society. You hear me? We're presently seeing it. The future of America right now is uncertain. Mm -hmm. However, there's one fact that we can be sure of. Right. We can be sure that our God has not changed. Right. Oh, hallelujah. That will make somebody rejoice. Amen. The world around us is shaken, but God is still our rock. Amen. God is still stable. Amen. Amen. And so knowing how God worked in the past, we could come to the conclusion, first, we who know Him must humble ourselves by admitting to our sins. Two, pray and ask for forgiveness of personal sins and sins of the nation. Three, Seek God's presence continually and for repent of our sinful ways. Then we have met all of these requirements. We can expect God to, one, hear and respond to our prayers. Two, forgive our sins, bringing us into a relationship with Him. Three, heal our land by reversing America's alarming downward spiral into a black hole of moral depravity and chaos. Right. May, we meet, may we all humble ourselves before the Lord, the God of heaven, 
pray and seek His face, and turn from our wicked ways. Then may the Sovereign Lord, who is slow to anger, has great love, and would rather forgive than sin judgment. Hear our prayers in heaven. Have mercy on us, and hear our land. Mm -hmm. Beloved, before I close today, I want you to go with me to 1 Peter 4 and 17. And I want to share this, this verse, 17, 18, and 19. These three verses with you before I close today. I don't have a, I don't have a mean spirit in me. No. But I'm just seeing sin run rampant. And the folk, you can call it what you want to call it. Sin brings destruction. Right. Sin brings harm. Right. Sin takes men down roads that they normally wouldn't go. Sin makes people do things they normally wouldn't do. Sin is, is something that gets a hold of a man's heart and then he has no conscience of wrongdoing. Or maybe I should say, he overrides yeah, the conscious of wrongdoing. But in 1 Peter 4 and 17, oh, I believe this fits the day we live in today. Verse 17 says, For the time has come that judgment must begin. Mm. But I want you to look where it begins. Mm. Judgment must begin in or at the house of God. Mm-hmm. Now, I want you to look what's happening in our nation today. Amen. There is violence in the street. But for the first time in our nation, there's violence against re religious liberties like we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice what's happening today. Because of man's laws, churches are being closed. Because of man's laws, a pastor in Louisiana could face up to three years in prison. Because of man's laws, singing, singing about God in the streets, people have been arrested for it. Uh -huh. That's what's taking place. But look at another thing. Because of sin and because of the pestilence that's come in our land. Pestilence is an uncurable, an incurable disease. An uncurable disease uh -huh. is pestilence. I used to think pestilence was pest. I used to think it was, was bugs and crickets and mosquitoes and frogs and all of that. Those are plagues. I don't like none of them. None of them. I had a fly flying around me a while ago. That's of the devil. Matter of fact, it's a symbol of the devil. You look it up. It's a symbol of the devil. That's a different story. But he said judgment's going to start in God's house because of this sickness. Today our church is shut down. Churches across the nation is shut down. Amen. I'm here to tell you something today, and I, I say this with all humility. We've lost some tremendous pastors. We lost some godly men that has died because of the sickness and disease. And I'm not saying that they sinned and that's what had come against them. But he said, before any judgment happens anywhere else, i got to start in the house of God. i got to get the house of God right. Am I reading that scripture wrong? Let's look at it again. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins with us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? I want you to see that. He said it first begins with us to get us right. Because if it don't first begin with us, this nation ain't got a chance. If the church don't get right, this nation ain't got a chance. Right. If the church don't stand up again proclaiming the rightful word of God, right. this nation ain't got a chance. Right. If the church don't stand up again and the preachers and pastors and leaders with the backbone and say sin's going to take you to hell, mm. this nation don't have a chance. Oh, and so God's saying, i got to get my church, i got to get judgment started back in my church. If I'll get that right, then those outside the church has a chance. Right. But he was in the bottom part of that verse. He said, if I don't get that right, those outside the church of the gospel of God are in trouble. Mm -hmm. He went on saying, verse number 18, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? And I want to know something I've never seen before. 
in this verse. He said, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the, he said, if we're, let me go back. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly? I want you to look at that. Ungodly. And then he goes and says, and sinner. He separated them two. Ungodly and sinner. He said, I seen that. For the first time in my 35 years of preaching, I thought, oh, what's that mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what I feel like it means. Some churches have got ungodly. Come on. He later on lists the sinner. Wow. He lists the sinner. He calls him out by name. But he talks about the ungodly. Mm -hmm. There's an ungodly move that's moved its way in the house of God. Yeah. We've allowed ungodly people to stand on platforms. We've, uh, we've allowed ungodly preachers to stand in pulpits. Right. We've, allowed, we've allowed ungodly people to become members of a church. Yeah. I know I sound like I'm beating you up today, but I'm really not. God just showed me something I've never seen before. Look at it again. If the righteous scared to be saved, where shall the ungodly? Right. And then he said, and the sinner appear. Said so preacher, he just putting the ungodly and the sinner together. Maybe he is, but sure opened my eyes to something different. Oh, no, come on, that's true. Amen. I believe he done this on purpose to show us that we can come ungodly all the time while we're trying to live for God. Listen to me, friend. If I don't keep control of my flesh, I can easily come ungodly. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You hear me? Anything, anything that goes against the will of God is an ungodly spirit. If I let my anger get the best of me and I tell that guy out there in the street what I think about him, I just become ungodly. Yeah. You hear me? If somebody bumps me or cuts me off in line at Walmart, and Walmart is the best place to become ungodly. <laughs> just kidding. But do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> John bro traffic will make you become ungodly if you ain't right. careful. That's right. That's right. I'm just trying to talk to us today. He's talking to the church. Remember, he said judgment's going to come to the church first. Mm -hmm. He said, I want the ju ju judgment to come there first. I want to get them right. But they, they can't become ungodly now. And then he said, he said, then where will the sinner appear? Let's read on a little farther. Verse number 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing. You see that? Amen. In other words, vengeance is not yours. Vengeance is not mine. Retaliation is not yours. Retaliation is not mine. And I'm going to tell you something. Somebody's not going to break in my house and me sit on the couch and say, Get them, God, get them. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. That ain't going to happen. We're going to meet them with Smith and Wesson, and then we'll try to resurrect them with the prayer of God. Hello? Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you're coming to harm, that's different. That's different. If you're coming to harm my family, God expects you to stand up and take care of your family. Yeah. But to just willfully go out and harm somebody, that's not God's plan. That's not God's plan, friend. That's not God's heart, but Dwayne says. we got to have the heart of God. When you've got the heart, what did Jesus say? Look at me. He's there. He's hanging. He's hanging on a cruel cross. One that he don't deserve. It never it was meant for him. It was meant for the cruelest, the cruelest of criminals. That's what the cross was meant for. Christ is hanging on the cross. He's suffering. He's dying. He's hurting. You think that didn't hurt? Are you kidding me? He's got a crown of thorns pushed on his head. Blood, blood's running down his face. His, his nails and his in his hands or his wrists, wherever you want to put them, there in his feet, and a soldier pierces his side. And what does he say? He says, Lord, kill them all. That ain't what he said, is it? You know what he said? Lord, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Oh, my Lord, God, give me the mind of Christ. Look, look at this again. He said, Wherefore, let them to suffer according to the will of God. Commit their keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing. We're going to go through some stuff. We're going to go through some stuff. 
But we're going to have to learn to be creative. We're going to have to learn how to use the mind of Christ. We're going to have to use it. We don't walk in the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Right. He says, time to use the mind of Christ. Time to use And then he went on to say, he said, do well in well doing as unto the faithful creator. Right. Ooh, ain't that good? He could have said as unto the creator, but he put a word in there that made that verse mean so much more. He said as unto the faithful creator. Has God been faithful to you? Has God been faithful to you? Right. Then I asked the question, have we been faithful to God? I can't answer that question with a, with a strong yes because I've failed God. I've, I've, I've missed the mark, friend. I've sinned against God. I've done things that God's not happy with. And so have you. But you know what? He said that God is a faithful creator. Mm. He's a faithful. Now I want you to know something about that. When he put that that way, he said he's a faithful creator. So everything God created, God make it right. And God said, I'm going to be faithful to that. I'm going to be faithful to what is right. I'm going to be faithful. Remember God made it and he backed up and looked at it and he said something. Mm. What did he say about Dwayne when God made everything? It's good. He said, it's good. It's good. When God made everything, he backed up and looked at it and said, it's good. When you do right, I do right, and we do our best to live holy and righteous in the sight of God, God backs up and looks at us and said, that's good. Yeah. That's good. That's like a daddy standing outside the, behind the fence of a son that's, that's getting ready to bat. And that son swings and he hits that ball and it goes and he runs to first place. Dad stands up and says, that's good, son. That's yeah. good. Yeah. No, Dad was wanting a home run. He wanted him to knock it over the fence. You know what happens when, when that son strikes one, strikes two, strikes three? If that's a good father, you know what he says? That's good, son. That's good. You right. took a best swing. That's right. You've done the best you, you could do. Right. You took a swing at it. Yeah. Some of us ain't even swinging at it. Yeah. Hello? Some of us are crying because we can't get on first base and we ain't even picking up the bat. Right. What is the bat, preacher? What is the bat? This is our bat. That's right. And we're complaining because we can't get to first base, second base, or third base. You ain't picking up the bat, much less swinging it. Right. Good preaching, if I got to say so myself. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you today that God's not, God's not showing His punishment on the earth. I heard God. I heard God this week tell me. God said, I'm just I'm just keeping my promise. I'm just keeping my promise. I told you this was coming. I told you this was coming. You ever told your child something? They were out and you told them, you keep doing that, you're going to get hurt. Man, you're going to get hurt. I never forget, I'll talk about Kaylee, man, our granddaughter. Kaylee's my sweetheart. All my kids are my sweetheart. But Kaylee, Kaylee, uh, we got a little motorcycle, a little, little battery-powered motorcycle. And got them each one. And they were riding it up and down the street. And Kaylee buzzed off down the street. The thing run 15 miles an hour, yeah. which is fast for a little kid. It's fast for an old man like me. But anyway, uh, she come, she run down the road. She come back. She had an idea. Had an idea she going to pop a wheelie. Yeah. First time she's ever been on a motorcycle. And she's going to pop a wheelie. And I said, oh, don't do that. And boy, she done it once and landed on the wheel. The second time she done it, she went crazy. It went wobbly. And next thing you know, she turns over and she scratches herself up. And she's all wounded and hurt. And we loved on her. And I didn't say it, but I wanted to say it. I told you not to do that. I told you not to do that. Well, you know what God's saying from glory today about this nation? Nation, I told you. If you've done this, I was going to bring this to you. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie to right. you. I'm going to keep that promise. The promises of God are yea and amen. Even when it means judgment. Think about that. We've only used that about good things in our life. 
Oh, God, I pray to by the blessing and your promises are yea and amen. Praise the Lord. God says, you're right. That's right. Mm -hmm. But I also made some promises that you might not be able to rejoice about. Because I promised, if you sin against me, judgment's going to come into your house. Isn't that something, church? Right. Isn't that something? Right. I love you today. I pray that this word is spoken to your heart. I pray that you've been challenged today. I said nothing today that was out of order. I, I just read to you some things that was truth and and right. I'm here to tell you today, I know I, I spoke about President Obama and some things that he's done wrong. I can tell you flat-footedly there's been some things that President Trump has done wrong. You know what? When President Obama was in presidency, I prayed for him. You know what I do with President Trump? I pray for him. I pray for him. I pray for him. I won't back down to tell you that I believe that President Trump is the man of the hour. I won't back down from that. I believe he's God's man. Any man that has stand up for Israel, like our president has stood up for Israel, is a man of the hour. Right. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with all my heart. I'm not telling you how to vote. I pretty much told you how I vote. But anyway, <laughs> but I love you. I, I thank God for you. And we'll be back with you tonight at 5 o'clock. I want to pray with you before you go. If His Word has challenged your heart, you can make things right with God. Hey, listen, if you've been judgmental or critical or done things that you shouldn't have done and this Word has challenged you, all you got to do is say, God, have mercy on my soul and forgive me. I was critical. I was mean. I was mean-spirited. I said things I shouldn't have said. God, have mercy on me. Forgive me of my sins. God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Father, I come to you right now asking God that you forgive us. We all stand in a place of needing forgiveness. God, I need it. We all need it. God, I've done things probably this week. God, I needed you to forgive me for what I'm sure I have. God, I come to you today, God, asking that you would forgive us. Have mercy on us. God, help us to not have spirits, any type of spirits outside the Spirit of God. And God, they are spirits. God, they're spirits, God, that are running loose in our land today. And they, they'll attach yourself to us if we allow it. And God, I pray, Lord, that you allow us to have the Spirit of Christ. Let blessings follow us, God. Let blessings be upon family members throughout this day. Our audience that watched us today, I pray blessings upon them. Then, God, now I pray for our country. Our country is in turmoil. Our country is in great distress. Our country is in, a, is in terrible upheaval. There's violence in the street. There's shooting in the streets. We're seeing, we're seeing things go on, God. I'm okay, God, with, with peaceful protests. That don't bother me. But, God, the, the, the stealing and the robbing and destroying and destruction and harming and killing is wrong, God. And I pray, God, for our nation that has gone down a road that is in destruction and wrong. God, I pray you would help us as a church to wake up, shake ourselves, and stand up. For the time to speak up is now. Mm -hmm. and God, I pray, God, that you bless us today and love us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God bless you. we see you tonight, 5 o'clock.